Hello, this is Sharon Fitzpatrick, and it's time for Dishing on Presentations with Peter Avari, and he is coming to us from Sweden. Peter is the co-founder and CEO of Prezi. My name is Sharon Fitzpatrick, and I'm the editor of Presentation Expert. Hello, Peter. How are you? Hi, Sharon. Great. I'm on, on my vacation here, so in the country where I was born and raised. Oh, perfect. I know you showed me a little bit about the farm and all the animals, and that's pretty, that's fun. That's the yeah. way we kind of balance our work life. There has been a ton going on with Prezi this year, so let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. So uh, tell me about Prezi Next. Yes, this spring we, we launched Prezi Next, which is a new technical platform which we build all our new products on. And then we've also previewed Prezi AR together with Ted. And in addition, we've acquired a company, Infogram, that helps us to visualize data and tell stories together with data. Is there kind of an underlying theme about telling stories? Does that kind of fit? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, that's what we've been doing really here for the last seven years. And, and we're doing it through spaces. So I think we should maybe mention a little bit about that. But it's actually something that we found now that helps people to be more effective in their communication to the extent that even Harvard researchers says so. Let's talk about the Harvard research. I think it's, it's been an interesting response to the research and all the articles that are out there, but what's your take on what they said? Well, well they were saying that if you present with Prezi, then you're seen as more effective, more organized, more persuasive, and more engaging that if you use, say, PowerPoint or no visual at all. One of the really interesting things that came out of that was that, in fact, PowerPoint doesn't seem to be any better than, the, than using no tool at all. But with Prezi, you can see a significant improvement. And that actually goes hand in hand with what our customers say, that you know, their close rates go up, their audience satisfaction rates go up by just switching from slides to Prezi. So there's been, I don't know, did you see Dave Parody's article on LinkedIn? No, I missed that. Yeah, I mean, he kind of talked about it and he kind of said that it's really kind of a balance, that he, he didn't think that it was PowerPoint going away. He thought that they were good, good points for the argument, definitely, but it's not something where people were going to, PowerPoint was going to go away. But the idea of the Zoomable interface is something that we're definitely going to see and we saw that with um, kind of with what you guys do and then of course the introduction of zoom for microsoft powerpoint so yeah. i definitely see where this may change some of the way people do presentations but i don't see where prezi is going to overcome powerpoint to be honest with you well it's my job to see that and i think of course a lot about that but i think what we have shown is that we have three companies that do slides we have microsoft google and apple and all of these three companies they have a huge benefit because most of the time people don't really buy powerpoint you know they they have windows installed on their computer and then they start using the stuff that are on, on there uh, but with Prezi and our spatial approach to visualization, we've actually been able to become a competitor to the world's largest companies. And so we're very proud of that and want to continue innovating and helping presenters to be both understood and remembered better. I think Harvard's a really good study center. They really do the research. It's very credible. I'd like to see a larger sample size than the 153. I hope yeah. they kind of expand on that and let us know. And then look at the demographic, which would be more the business professional at a, at a higher age. Because when I looked at the mean age of 27, that's a totally different generation than you might find in a business world. A business world is probably going to be an older generation. So it'd be interesting to really compare it to what the industry really is right now. That's true. And I also think that with time, we will see uh, big shifts happening. So we, we can really see that the first people who adopted Prezi were the millennials. And and we launched Prezi Business only a year ago. So this was six years after having to 
having launched first version of Prezi. But the reason why we launched it is because we're seeing this millennial generation bringing Prezi with them into their workplaces. And this could be their first job and then somebody in management sees them doing a nice Prezi and the management gets interested. So that's really the foundation for Prezi business. And, and maybe it'll be a generational shift before we can see Prezi domination, but we're working on <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely see that. I, I can see where the millennials, because they saw it and, and used it in an education background. And now as they go in the workforce, I can definitely see that. And I saw that from the demographics in the Harvard study as well, that they very much looked at that age group. And so it'd be really interesting to have the dichotomy between that and the um, kind of older generation that has been using PowerPoint first and may not know Prezi. That's right. And, but I think also one, one really interesting thing that came out of this research is for me, a lot of conversations with cognitive scientists. And we started to think a little bit about, okay, is there a way we could try to explain what's going on here? Because really the research from Harvard doesn't really say why this is happening and so I can give you a thought experiment. We don't have proof of this, but we have good guesses on why this is mm -hmm. happening. So would you be willing to play it with me? Oh, absolutely, I'm always willing to play. <laughs> okay, good. So I'm gonna ask you to name your five favorite kitchen appliances. Okay, coffee maker, coffee maker, coffee maker, coffee maker. <laughs> no, okay. um, I'm only kidding. Coffee maker, espresso maker, um, Micro wow. microwave, yeah. Uh, toaster, yeah. And my um, mixer. Great. So as you were telling me this, I could actually see your eye wandering around, and I would guess that that was because you imagined your kitchen and you looked around in your kitchen, scanning what's next to next what, and then you named the different things you saw. Is that right? That is a hundred percent correct. Now, so turns out you're not unique. In fact, everyone does. <laughs> but, it, but it's also a really great cue how, to how our brains understand and, and recall information. Mm -hmm. So before we go there, though, let's just note what you didn't do and what a lot of presentations mm -hmm. do. What didn't you do? Um, I didn't show you anything visually, so... Well, that's true. You didn't, but you imagined visual things. I did imagine visual. Maybe what I didn't do was describe them enough so that somebody else could visualize them. They may have gone and said, okay, she has a coffee maker, but she didn't say, well, what kind of coffee maker or what kind of um, espresso machine and you know, that's something true. has to make her triple vente, not but no with mocha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, where I was going with this is that you didn't build a list of words. Neither ah, okay. word, alphabetized, but most of all, you didn't spell out any words. And right. let's be honest, the vast majority of presentations out there, they just contain a lot of text and often in bullet point format. But what we know today is that if you present using a list of words with bullet points today, actually people are less likely to understand and retain that information. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't say, didn't show anything at all. And can you guess why that is? Well, a picture tells a thousand words. I mean, so one of the reasons is that we are in such a visual visually stimulating world these days that people just tend to bypass text. I know I do sometimes. So you really want a picture to speak to itself. That's why visual storytelling is one of the hot trends in, in presentations. But it turns out that that has cognitive foundations though, because it's actually measurable that it's very hard to listen to somebody and read text at the same time. Right. I mean, try, try listening to the radio and reading a book at the same time. Impossible, right? Mm -hmm. Yet, if you show a slide with a ton of bullet points, that's exactly the situation you're creating as a presenter. So if there's one thing you take away from this research is do not show bullet pointed lists ever, because if you do, then people are less likely to understand and retain the information than if you show nothing at all. Is there something that you can show that actually helps people to understand and retain the information better? And what we know today is that there is actually two things you can show. 
One is, of course, a visual. So like showing a visual of your coffee maker. Maybe it's metallic, beautiful machine, you know, with a nice logo. That will actually enforce your message right. and help people to both understand and retain what it is that you're talking about. But then there is another thing, and that you can do in PowerPoint and, and in slides, right? So there's no added benefit with Prezi in, in that thing. But there is an additional thing that is as important as these pictures. And that's actually where the coffee maker happens to be, next to the mocha machine, say perhaps. And this is where the zooming comes in with Prezi, really, because when you zoom from the uh, coffee maker to the mocha machine, you create a connection between the two. And maybe then you zoom out and you take a look at the entire kitchen and reveal the toaster as well. It really helps to enforce the connections between ideas and actually helps people to place uh, these things literally in a physical sense, which then helps people to understand and retain the information better. You know, the memory palace technique, you may have heard of that. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, thousands of years old technique for people to remember their speeches. They will place them in a room and literally in their minds walk through the room in order to remember what to say. Well, with Prezi for the first time ever in human history, we can actually place this room in front of not just the presenter, but also the audiences. And that actually helps both presenter and audiences to both understand and retain the information better and I think both you and and the listeners here will will know that for a great storyteller it's not about that one slide but it's about the entire story if you want to tell a really uh, compelling story you need to have people understanding the full story and not and not just one slide and that's where really Prezi I think drives more engagement and persuasive yeah, I think it's I think it's it's both. I mean, I I think it's look at the medium you're comfortable with, whether it's Prezi, PowerPoint, Keystone, or you know Haiku, whatever it is that you want to use. And I think it, it's interesting that it is all right now about the visual storytelling, where we were talking before about kind of the millennials. I see that <laughs> for visual storytelling, millennials have had a huge impact. Yep. Yeah, that, and they're brought up with it, and they yeah they are thinking uh, immediately, creatively, and visually. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. So, um, you know, I can see that with, with my kids, definitely. And they're a lot older. So, but definitely I can see the influence of storytelling and how, it, how they interact with it and the impact it has on them. Whereas maybe my generation, it's not as intense because we, we didn't grow up with it. So it's definitely uh, an interesting experiment. So let, let's go back to kind of Prezi. Um, tell me, why did you start Prezi? Oh, yeah. Well, it was really with the mission of helping people to share their ideas better ways. And uh, my co-founder is an artist. So he would, uh, so this started as an art project, actually. So he was uh, touring the world because he got invited to different museums to exhibit these nice visualizations. And one of them was a zooming interface that he did and people liked it so much. So they asked, oh, is there a way I could do my own of that? And that's how we were triggered to essentially start thinking about, okay, what would a tool or a software look like where anyone could make these beautiful visualizations? So that was the start. And, and today we have 85 million people who have created at least a Prezi. They have created the world's largest database of publicly available presentations. And this is not just uh, publicly available, but the vast majority of them are reusable. So if you go and search on our database, uh, you can essentially find Prezi to borrow, that you can use as inspiration to build on, to, to develop your idea. We launched a new version of Prezi that's 100% flat free. Uh, this was our goal with Prezi Next. And uh, now that's become also a foundation to build new technologies on like Prezi AR that we showed with uh, Ted here a few months ago. And I'm, I'm happy to show you a demo of that if you're interested. I would love to see it. Let's do it.
And so you might have heard of AR before. So AR is for augmented reality and just a few weeks ago or maybe a few months ago now, Facebook showed AR in terms of putting funny stuff on your pictures. Right. Have you seen them? <laughs> I love your ears. Your rabbit ears look great. Yeah, so this is the kind of things that Facebook is doing uh, right now. And, um, and we, of course, we're, we're not into the uh, picture sharing and, and so much the bunny ears, but we are a lot about storytelling. We just talked about that. And so for years, actually, we've been thinking about how do you tell stories great with augmented reality, but more importantly, how do we help people get closer to their ideas and so for the longest time um, TED speakers have been using Prezi and uh, we connected with this guy Robert Sapolsky who was about to do a TED talk and we we thought hey why don't we try to do AR now together with him now he's a professor at Stanford and he wanted to talk about what actually helps or discourages a person to pull a trigger in a gun situation. So actually really scary topic, but this shows to some extent the power of AR because when you stand next to a gun like that, well, you can imagine that it becomes a very powerful talk. And so what happened was that from our offices in San Francisco, Robert zoomed on to the Vancouver stage and with 2,200 people there live, he presented and it, it looked a little bit like this. So this is from, uh, from our offices in San Francisco. And the big thing here was really not the fact that, you know, he presented with some sort of overlay because if, if you're in the TV world, you know that you can do this with a green screen, right? right? But the big thing was here that there was no green screen all there was was just a simple laptop and it was running this new um, software and, and technology that we call Prezi Next. And using Prezi Next, we could create this entire experience. And right now we're very optimistic that it will come to offices, schools, and just about anywhere we'll start to see things uh, where you can essentially touch the ideas that you're talking about. And this, we believe, will really help people to, again, have more engaging and more persuasive experiences. So in a business environment, take me through what would a good case study be for AR in a business presentation? I mean, I think in a situation just like this would be really useful. More and more meetings are uh, done virtually uh, over video conference. And one of the things that I think is really disruptive is, it, is when you have to choose between the screen that shows the visual versus uh, the, you know, the video of the speaker. Because in reality, to have a great experience like that, you need to have both. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see that. I think that makes uh, a good point because I can see where we're trying to find that balance between seeing what a person looks like and um, also seeing the content because you want to marry that, you want that connection and that relationship and it's really hard to get. So I think it's really intriguing to look at that. I'm curious to see what the um, presentation space will do with it and uh, I look forward to seeing it. So thanks for sharing it. Yeah, sure. We're very excited. So let's talk about Infogram. I am a huge fan of Infogram. Tell me about why you bought it and what the future holds for the two entities. Sure. So uh, essentially, Infogram started by, was started by journalists who were doing graphics for other journalists, trying to visualize their stories. And that's really how their business got started as well. Initially, it was uh, publications that used them the most. And then as, as those journalists started pre uh, pre spreading infographics, um, so also businesses started to use Infogram and they said, well, this is great. We can put it on our website, but how about putting it in presentations? Mm -hmm. and, and we knew each other from year one. 
it so just happens to be that Prezi started in Budapest in Hungary, a very unexpected place to start a business like Prezi from. And they started from Riga in Latvia. So when they started their business, they had us a little bit as a role model for how to build the business. And so we've just been touch, in touch during these five years. And, uh, and at some point we just said, well, look, our users are asking for data visualization inside of Prezi. Your users are asking to put your data visualizations in presentations. It just makes sense for both of us to do it together. And they didn't actually have to do this, so they were cash flow positive, but I think that speaks to uh, just how, what a good fit there was between the uh, two companies. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I think infographics and the whole idea of data visualization is really, you know, a continuing growing trend that we're seeing, especially, you know, you don't want death by PowerPoint or death by presentation. You definitely want to get and make sure that you're getting the right content and the right messaging out there. So um, I think infographics have been a really nice addition to what we use to tell our stories. Yeah. And and this is a really interesting because Infogram has the same narrative in, in terms of why users are using them. It can see that the users of Infogram really engage more with content that is framed in a good way by Infogram. So, so people stay longer on the websites. They actually take time to discover the data more. And that, that's exactly what we'd like to, to have in Prezi as well. Yeah, I look forward to playing with it and getting a chance to get to know it. I'm, I can see definitely some good uses for AR, like we could have fun with it during meetings like this. Let's talk a little bit about the industry. Um, I'm really curious to kind of get your thoughts on what the trends are, what you see coming up for presentations, and what you think we need to look at more than we do now. What needs to change? Definitely. I mean, it goes back to what we spoke about earlier on about how we become more effective presenters. Because at the end of the day, it's no good use of time, neither for a presenter or audiences, if we don't get our ideas across. Right. I like to think that we don't just want to even get our ideas across, but we want to inspire people for action somehow. And that that actually requires some thoughtfulness on how we convey our ideas. And I think not only did we learn that it should be more visual, we talked about that, but we've also learned that it's really important to be able to draw the connections between the different ideas that make up an entire story. With that uh, background, I would think that the most important thing that uh, presentation tools can do is to create more immersive and more spatial experiences and we have a lot of technology that's coming this way we have both something called AR augmented reality we have VR virtual reality that's even a, a, a step even more immer immersive but even without those things we can see that if you just use a zooming interface on a flat screen you already are creating this this more um, immersive experience that helps people to place their ideas, which then helps them to understand and retain the information better. So I think that is a trend that isn't going away. And, and if you think about it, it makes sense in terms of computers are capable of this and we just happen to do a lot of text on them because traditionally before we had computers, that's what we used to do. Mm -hmm. But why would we do a lot of text on these things when they can show video, images, tell stories in a more effective way? So I, I don't think we're going to go back to the text-based presentation style anytime soon. So, uh, you know, I think that brings up a good point. I think it's, it's not just the medium. We had talked about this earlier, too. It's, it's really about how you use the technology to tell your story. How, what is it that you're doing? Are you using the pictures? Are you using the zoomable interface? Are you using just the idea of combining that with the power of the presenter having the ability to tell a good story around the graphics? And it's, it's kind of the art of presenting that we're really talking about as well. Yes, and this requires actually a little bit more thoughtfulness, I think. But on the other hand, we can clearly see that 
it is more effective. And, and at the end of the day, again, it's no use to do a presentation unless you intend to change the world. I think that was Kennedy who said something along those lines. Yes. I think it's worthwhile to invest in it. And at the same time, we can see that more and more devices are trying to get our attention. We, we really have an attention scarcity problem developing. So the people who can stand out in an environment, in a noisy environment like that, competing with you know, messages on people's mobile phones and, and uh, somebody's trying to type away notes, people who can compete with all of the potential attention leaks mm -hmm. that happen in presentation situations, these people will really stand out. So I think it'll, uh, the premium of being a good storyteller will be much higher in the future, actually. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good point. I think as we even ourselves, um, and I'm not a millennial, but if we look at kind of that generation or what and how they're doing things, they're definitely looking, there's so much for their attention. So, I mean, I used to be an avid newspaper reader. Now I read everything online because I want that just-in-time information that we get from the internet that we didn't have a few years ago. So it, it's really important. And I know that then visually we need to know what are the images that go with it that help um, explain the story maybe without the words because the, a picture is worth a thousand words as we say. So what, what advice would you give to anyone that's looking to do presentations in the next year? What are the things they might look at um, to do to be a better presenter whether it be with Prezi or any platform yeah yeah I think the most important thing is to start learning a little bit about the this the science of communication because actually nowadays we're just at the prefaces it's really interesting we're just at the prefaces now where we can actually connect storytelling with some science of how the brain works mm -hmm how you develop the stories in, a, in an increasingly effective way. So I think that's something definitely worthwhile uh, keeping your eyes on. And then the other skill set, I mean, as, as we're talking about here, is just learning how to do visual communication around, around your stories. So really understanding maybe how a cartoonist thinks. Right. Or, 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 you know, in our case, we talk about spatial visual storytelling. So how can you use a space to tell a story? I think these are extremely interesting techniques that will be employed more and more and to, to be that effective storyteller in that noisy environment we're talking about. One of the trends we're definitely seeing and one of the hot buttons right now is 3D animation. What do you think of that and how, how would you incorporate Prezi into that kind of trend? Sure. I mean, first of all, with 3D animations, it's still relatively complicated to do them. So unless you're a, you know, you've got everything, all the basics down and, and you're at the very mastery level and now you want to, you know, improve that mastery level, then we can start talking about 3D visualizations. But for, for a good amount of time, I think this will be pretty inaccessible for most people. Now, we, we could of course get fun, fun little animations that people send us that we can spin around and, and look at in, in different ways, but in reality, that's where the state of that technology is now, and we, we will need uh, some time until we can make it simple enough for, for people to use that well, and probably, once we get there, it'll be a, more of a computer-assisted experience where, where our machines will just have to be much smarter in order for us to do that easily. That makes sense. Anything you'd like to talk about that you want to kind of encourage people to look at for the industry? Sure. I mean, I think the, the, the one underestimated thing in all of this is that we're, we live in a time of again, increasingly smaller bits and shorter bits of information. And we need storytellers to tell compelling stories that help to connect the dots. Because the reality is that partly with the political situation in the world that we're in, 
it's partly due to the fragmentation of information. And, and we need storytellers to help bring us back into context, so to say, and help us connect the dots and, and actually help us see that what divides us is actually much fewer things than what unites us. And there, I think the storytellers have a tremendously important task that we're really underappreciating at the moment. So uh, that would be my one ask of, of the storytellers who are looking at this to help us, you know, bring, bring back more of, more of, of uh, the things that yeah, unite us, really. Great. So I know one of the things we all want to do is we want to see Prezi become a bigger part of our community. So, you know, we've got the Presentation Guild, the Presentation Summit, us. How can we uh, interact more with you? Because you guys have not really been as involved in our industry from that perspective. What do we need to do to kind of get in your wheelhouse or your sweet spot? Oh, well, we would love to engage. Let us know how we can engage. Reality is, uh, yeah, tell us uh, what we can do, and, and we'd love to explore all of that with you. Thank you so much, Peter, for taking time out of your vacation to join us today on Dishing on Presentations. I think I learned a lot, and I think our uh, subscribers will also learn a lot about Prezi, and uh, would suggest they all go to Prezi.com. And Peter, is there anything you'd like to end up with before we let you go have fun on your vacation? Sharon, it's been really enjoyable to speak with you and I'm looking forward to staying in touch and, and, and being a part of your community best we can. So uh, thank you for, for asking all the questions. Oh, you're welcome. And again, thank you for joining us. This is Sharon Fitzpatrick with Dishing on Presentations. Have a great day, everyone. Mm -hmm.